Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today on the channel, we are gonna be talking about and showcasing the best tent that I have ever used for winter camping, bar none. So let's get to it. Okay, so I have two tents here. One I've showed off on the channel before. This is the Nor Tent Gamma 6. This is a dome tent. This is a six person tent, ultra lightweight for a winter all season tent with a stove jack, which is built to withstand the elements of some of the worst that winter can throw at it. That's lightweight. Now the Russian Bear tent is 50 pounds, okay? That's pretty heavy. This is not something you're gonna be backpacking in. This is primarily for people who are bringing it in on a quad or a snowmobile. They've basically thought of every single thing with this tent. It's overbuilt, incredibly durable, incredibly easy to set up. So for that extra 35 pounds that you're getting over the Gamma A6, you're getting uh, ease of setup, you're getting more amenities, you're getting uh, more durable materials. So let's go and set up the Russian Bear tent and see what it looks like. We are going to clear out this entire area of snow to the best of our capability. And for that, I've brought a shovel. Now, because we're Russian bear style today, we're not doing packable ultralight stuff because the idea is, is that with this tent, you're gonna be using something where you're close to the roadside. I only had to traverse about 200 meters to get in. It was a bit of a rough patch coming through when we were bushwhacking, but overall it wasn't too bad. So this is the bag that it comes in. It's a heavy duty uh, tear master like material, very similar to what we use in some of our bug out rolls. I don't think it's the ideal fabric for this type of application, primarily because you want something that has that denim like Cordura abrasion resistance. Uh, this doesn't have that, but you know, it's not a deal breaker. It's still very durable material and it's got a lot of water resilience. So. Right away, we have the main tent. So this is all one piece. This is a very easy setup, guys. That's the main piece. I'm gonna toss it back there. This is the door. The door is really simple. So we have a rigid door here. It folds in on itself, fans out. And all we have to do to activate that, flip it over, pop it like that. And we have our door, which is going to Velcro on to the outside of the tent. We got some extra tent poles here. We have some inner organizational stuff. We also have a silicone mat for the wood stove. So they provide this to you, which is really nice. We have our tent pegs and our line, and we have some more internal storage compartments, which look a lot like our bug out roll. They give you a lot of extra room in there so that you're not having to you know, stuff the tent and you gotta roll it super tight to get it back in the bag. You know what I'm talking about if any of you have ever done the weekend warrior camping with your Walmart tents. You don't have to do that with these, okay? So this is a really excellent uh, packing system. So this is the main part of the tent. All we're gonna do, we're just gonna release that strap if we can find the end of it. There it is, so there's a buckle. We're just going to toss this strap in the bag. This is gonna come down just like an umbrella. Easy peasy. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but just like an umbrella, you just gotta pop it up. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna push this up into there and that's gonna prop it up. This does take a little bit of strength, so all the more reason to exercise. Just like so. Now we can just position it how we want. Get her nice and centered, super easy. That's what I love about this tent. These are the hooks that they give you. They're really heavy duty. They have some threading on the bottom and I don't think they're aluminum. They feel like some kind of steel, but they're really heavy duty. So we have a few different kinds. So these are the, the hooked ones here that are threaded. And so these are really, really heavy duty screws. These are the kind of tent pegs you don't want to lose. And they're just, they feel incredibly durable. Like it feels like I could hit this with a mallet or a hammer and it's not gonna bend like those usual tent pegs that you're used to. So you can see there's this nice skirt on the bottom. And what we're gonna do with this skirt afterwards is we're gonna cover it with snow and that's gonna provide more wind resistance. And these threads, the threads on the, 
almost like allow you to screw it into the ground. That's kind of interesting. Now, the thing is, when you're not worried about weight, you can add all these accessories. So just this in itself is like five pounds. So, you know, when you're not concerned with weight, it's easy to make a really good tent. It's when you're trying to be conservative with the weight that you have to kind of cut those corners. So it's not always because the tent manufacturer doesn't want to give you a top quality product with all the bells and whistles. They're trying to balance out weight. Yeah, this is a sweet ass tent. Huh? The door attach inside here and there's a double sided loop system. So you're going to put the hook right in between it. It's a little tricky. I guess we could start, start at the bottom corner and work it in. It's tricky because it has both sides, right? So start at the bottom corner like that, work it in. Then we're going to tuck it. There we go. Now we have a door. This in itself is gonna be the selling point for a lot of people, because if you know getting inside and out of a tent is kind of a hassle, especially in the winter time when you gotta go at night, this, all you gotta do is open the door. Now, as you can see, you can just shut it like that, which will be fine to keep in a significant amount of heat. But if you wanna get in there for the night or just get in there to have a meal, you just gotta tuck it inside this flap here, just like so. Tuck it in and you're nice and sealed in there. This is the fly, so this is your rain protection. This is a, a fabric called Oxford uh, 300 denier fabric. And what that means is that it's primarily water resistant. It's a very, very durable material. It's tear resistant. So if you initiate a cut in here, it's not gonna continue. So it's got ripstop and uh, just really, really tough and waterproof. And then on the inside, you have a finer mesh. You have this, which is like a camo see-through mesh. And then you also have another layer here. So you just got layers upon layers. So as you can see in here, there's a built-in floor that comes with this tent. Now it zips up along the bottom here. You probably can't see it on the camera, but there is a zipper attachment all along the bottom. So I could take this entire floor out if I wanted to have exposure to the ground or I could unzip half of it if I was doing some ice fishing and I wanted access to my fishing hole. You can also get a separate insulated floor for this tent, which is a lot thicker and it provides you that insulation so you're not losing heat from the ground due to conduction. With that insulated floor, there is also ports that you can open so that you can have access to your fishing hole. So those are really built with uh, fishermen in, in mind. So this hole here is just for the purpose of helping you get the tent set up. You can actually remove it, which is what we're going to do right now. This is just a stopper. So we're going to screw that in up here. And you can see that I can stand up fully in this tent. I'm a little over 5'9 on a good day. So as you can see, we got windows, several windows. So we got some hooks all around the top here. And these are fairly strong hooks. We're going to hook the bug out roll up here. We also have storage up top so you can put your socks. Uh, because the heat's going to rise to the top, this is going to be good for drying out your stuff. We also have these Velcro attachment points and they provide you with a series of different pockets. So this is just another vent for airflow uh, and it's also got a mosquito mesh covering over it. That's just to prevent condensation buildup because condensation will be a factor in a tent like this, unfortunately. We also have a silicone protector. So this is flame retardant and it's also heat resistant. So you can have a wood stove pipe resting up against this going directly up into here, which is what we're gonna have in a minute. And uh, that's going to just keep it from melting the tent. Now, normally wood stove tents only have a stove jack. They don't have this protective cover right here so once again Russian bear really does think about everything there's a silicone flap so if you're not using this and you don't want to be losing heat to the outside then you can roll this back down and it's gonna velcro right onto there so you can see here on the exterior we have these kickstand vents so it just works like that we also have guy out points on pretty much every angle on every rib 
of the design. So if we wanted to, we could attach a line to these and expand the tent, give it a bit more girth. I got two of them set up right now and they basically have those guide points all around. Now, as you can see, we have this nice skirt all around here. So what we're gonna do ultimately is we're going to put snow around this tent and that's just gonna provide a little bit more insulation and it's also going to keep the wind from coming in. You see the stove jack here? There was that inner flap on the inside, so you can close it from the inside. You can also close it from the outside. Now, a neat feature for this stove jack is that there's actually uh, a metal piece which is embedded into the silicone. So that is very unique. Uh, this is something you, you would only see on a very, very high quality tent. This tent is just way, way overbuilt. Like it's incredible what they've done and you really do get what you pay for in spite of the fact that this is a, wait for it, $1,500 USD tent, give or take, you might get it on sale. Some people are gonna say it's not 1,000 denier, but if it was a thousand denier, then this tent would weigh 150 pounds. So it's strong enough for the purpose that you need it for. There is a reflective material here. So at night, if you have a headlamp on or something, you're gonna be able to see where the guy out points are. So I'm not sure how, I, how much I feel about it being built in. It would be nice if perhaps there was a reversible flap on it. So if you wanted that feature, you could have that. Again, not a deal breaker, just uh, something to think about. If for rain protection, you can erect the awning and it's just gonna come out like this and that's gonna provide you a bit more rain protection, not a whole lot. And honestly, if it's raining sideways, I don't know how useful that's gonna be. I think it would be better if it was a little bit wider. I think it could be a couple feet wider and that would help from that rain that's coming in from the sides. But it's just one of those extra features it's not something that I think is, that I would even expect to have on a tent like this. So it's a bonus. So I'm not gonna complain about it, even though I just did. I'm using a Nomad, a Winterweld Nomad medium wood stove. I just hope I brought all the pieces for it. So Russian Bear sells their own wood stoves, but I use this Winterweld Nomad. It's, I, I really like this stove a lot. So this is that amazing attention to detail with Russian Bear. They give you this silicon floor mat. Now we actually sell these at CanadianPreparedness.com, but they're for Winterwell wood stoves, but they just provide you with this. So we're just gonna put that under there like that. And that's gonna ensure that we don't burn our tent. This is a beauty. This is our air intake control. You just stick on there like that and see this is perfect for that. So the Winterwell Nomad stove has a spark arrester on it. You can actually get a finer uh, grit spark arrester if you wanted to. That should be enough to take care of the big coals that are going to potentially burn a hole in your tent. I think I like what we got going on here. It's a little, it's not entirely angled properly, but that's okay. So we got all our gear in here, our fire starting equipment. You can see. So what we're gonna try to do, I think we should be able to hook it up on these loops here. All right, so yeah, we got our little like, you know, organizer going on there. So what we need is to get a fire going. So we're using our ultimate fire tinder today. So this is the absolutely the best fire starter money can buy the easiest way to light a fire fire is life so as you can see you get a nice view out the side with this it's called the nomad view from winterwell it not only adds lighting it also adds a bit of ambiance one thing you really want to pay attention to when you are in a wood stove tent like this is if you're doing it for prolonged periods of time, make sure that that smoke is going out the chimney. Because if it's not, you could get some really low grade uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. And you'll notice you'll start to have a headache. You'll start to feel a little bit woozy. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you have a headache, it's likely due to carbon monoxide poisoning. You can see with this one here, the only downside to this is that we do have excess ventilation there which is not what i want because that's where all the heat is going to escape not a deal breaker we're still going to get a lot of heat in here 
without much fuss, but definitely something to be aware of. Another great use for snow is insulation. So if you have a tent like this and you wanna add a bit more heat retention to it, all you have to do is toss a little bit of snow exterior. This tent is neat because it has that skirt there, which is gonna allow you to do that. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna cover it up. That's gonna prevent wind. And that's also going to add a little bit more heat retention. This is also going to help if there is a storm, prevent your tent from blowing away. So guys, it is toasty warm in here. It is very, very hot. And uh, I've only used probably half a log's worth of wood for the last hour. And this place is roaring. In spite of the fact that the pipe is not flush with the stove jack, it's still really, really warm in here. So I got my mountain house here, really easy stuff to prepare. This has an expiration date of 2051. You know, at the rate that I'm grinding nowadays, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to 2051. So if you ask me, that's more than enough. The birch bark stick, not birch bark, but birch wood works great. So Russian Bear also provides you with these mini bug out rolls. Now the stitching and the vinyl is not nearly to the caliber as an actual bug out roll that we sell at CanadianPreparedness.com, but it's a neat little accessory that they provide. This is them going over and above. And I just can't say enough about, you know, how this company is, is thinking about everything. So you have, uh, you know, it's a pretty thin fabric because obviously they got to cut down on the weight somewhere. But you also have spots for your coffee cups to stick in there. You could put uh, stuff so with the see-through, very thin gauge vinyl. And they have some pretty heavy-duty zippers. They're not YKK, but, you know, I mean, this is an extra thing that I wouldn't even expect anyways. So you get lots of storage. You get two of these and then you get one, which is just a hard cloth material like this. All right, guys. So... That's the Russian Bear tent. This is the UP2. Now, right now, I believe this tent is probably back ordered. You might be able to find it in some places. I'll post a link in the description. We may have one or two left come the release of this video. I will say that I'm extremely impressed with this tent. There is so much attention to detail in here. When you're not worried about weight, you can add all the bells and whistles you want. And they really went to town with all of this. In terms of the user friendliness, you're not gonna find an easier tent to set up in the field. It's just, it's hands down simplicity. So I would really give this tent like a nine out of 10. The only drawback is gonna be the weight. With this tent, I don't at all feel that I need to be delicate with it because it's such a heavy duty material that you can step on it, you can twist it, you can scrunch it up. You know, I'm not worried about rain or anything like that. So. It's, uh, it's a great tent. Let me know what you guys think about this tent. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.